Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Did you know there's a list of monthly maintenance you should be doing to your bamboo printer? I sure didn't, and I bought my P1S about 8 months ago. Monthly maintenance is probably meant more for print farms, but as a hobbyist, we shouldn't be neglecting it either. I went through their wiki page to show the common maintenance items you should be doing every month if you're printing 24-7, or like every 3 months if you do a few prints a week like I do. I do have items you'll need to complete this link below if you're not sure where to get supplies. First we need to remove the AMS off the top of your printer and to do that you need to disconnect this power and data cable and also to pull out this PTFE tube. This tube has a little secret and that it's secured with a tab on the inside here. Use two fingers with one on each side gently push downward into the AMS while pulling on that tube on the other side and it should slide right out. Later we'll repeat this to install the tube again. Once disconnected, you can move the AMS and you'll want to lift the top glass too so everything inside the printer is easier to access. Next, you should be regularly washing your build plate. This would help with issues where your print's first layer isn't adhering properly. Here I have a tiny bit of dish soap, some hot water, gently scrub the build plate. Once you're satisfied, set it off to the side to air dry and make sure you clean both sides. You've probably noticed after months of printing, you're going to find all sorts of filament strands and dust inside the printer, even with an enclosure. I'm just taking a tiny battery powered shop vac and doing a once over wherever I can. The nozzle wiper can be worn down after continuous printing, but thankfully it's easy to replace. If you look down from the top, there's one screw you'll need a longer Allen wrench for, and luckily one came with the printer. Pull it out, put in the new one, screw it in. Thanks to the curved poop chute and the offset holes, it is keyed, so pay attention to that when reinstalling the replacement. If you skip maintenance and your printer isn't working either, then upload to PCBWay. You can download any STL, upload any number of models, select quantity, material, color, and more. PCBWay doesn't just 3D print either. CNC machining, custom PCBs, PCB assembly are just a few other services they can provide. New customers can get $5 off your first order using the link in the description below. To remove the filament cover, you'll first have to pull away the extruder cover. It's held on with magnets, so it's super easy. There's a single screw that prevents the lever from coming out all the way. You don't need to remove this screw, but back it out until the lever falls into a resting position. If it doesn't, or you have to push it a little bit, then the screw hasn't cleared the housing yet, I found out the hard way. The cutter itself just snaps into the lever and can be pulled out with a little effort. Be careful, don't cut yourself. I was a little careless when holding it in this video. With a new cutter installed, let's remove and clean the extruder assembly. First we need to remove the hot end, which is held in by two screws at its top and be sure to disconnect the cables. Once unscrewed, you can pull straight down to remove it. We'll need to remove the PTFE tube, and I did that by pushing down on the connection with an Allen wrench and pulling up on the tube itself. If the cutter lever is already removed and in its resting position, then leave it there because one of the three screws holding the extruder is behind it. If you already put it back up, well, undo the screw, put it back down. The extruder itself has four screws keeping it together and you'll need to loosen, not remove, the screw on the side to relieve the tension on the spring. Then we can remove the gears, clean the inside with some alcohol and a q-tip. It's probably not that dirty, but why not since we're in here?
If you can, then apply some lube to the gears before reversing the process to reassemble. I put lube on the filament wheel, which I probably should not have done, and I don't recommend. My first print is probably going to under extrude, but that issue should go away soon. Get yourself a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol and just dampen the cloth with it. Once you do that, you're gonna look for any rods on each axis and wipe them down. You're really just removing dust here and that's it. Once you've cleaned all the axes, you can move the head of the printer while it's off as long as you're gentle. Forcing it could be a very costly mistake. And don't forget the two vertical rods in, in the front. You need to wipe those down too. Before greasing the screws, we need to home it so we can later move the print bed. You'll be told you have to so you can't forget. Once the bed is at the top, either use the grease that came with the printer or I have some link below. Spread it fairly evenly and lightly on each of the three screws, including the one back in center. To spread it out, we're going to move the print bed to the other end of where it's at and repeat. I only had to do this twice, added a tiny amount the second time to be sure I had an even coating. At the end, be sure to wipe any excess clumps of grease at the bottom. You don't want dirt buildup down there. You'll want to blow out your fans with compressed air to remove any dust in there as well. You'll need to hold the fan in place. By letting the fan spin freely, you could generate a voltage that would go back into the PCB and damage your printer. Hold the fan with one finger, spray your compressed air with the other hand. There's a fan on the inside to the left, a fan on the extruder, which you also need to blow beneath it, and a fan on the back, which should be obvious if you look because I forgot to move my camera while doing it. When putting my printer back on the shelf, I found out I had broken filament and one of the tubes of the AMS because it wouldn't stop rolling the filament. So let's fix that. To remove the AMS internals, there are two screws in the back you need to unscrew with an Allen key. Once removed, you'll have to pull two sets of wires, which is super easy without any latches. If, like me, you printed the desecant de water absorbing pellet containers, you'll need to remove those too. With a little convincing, it'll pull right out. Then, like any other PTFE tube, you push in the connection to remove the tube and the filament can just be pulled out. Reverse this to put it back together, although the wires are a little difficult because the connections are small, you don't have a lot of room, just be careful and patient. 